sense his presence here this morning. You know, sometimes God sees us. He hears us. And, and, and can I say something this morning? Sometimes we sell ourselves short. We don't boast. We don't brag, but we got to understand who we are in Him, in right. Christ. Right. We are the house of God. Right. That enemy will lie to you. Others will tell you you can't achieve the promises of, by the Word of God. Everything will come against you. And you will always, if not careful, the credit. And I know the credit probably is not a word in your vocabulary or in your dictionary, but we will decredit the sense and the presence of worth. Come on, somebody. I want you to listen to this. It might be you, this song. I've never done this very often, but what I know I heard from God. I asked her, I want you to play a little bit of this. And if you feel like you've been trodden down, Tore down, destroyed. Or maybe you just so you're so weary that the fighting is gone. Maybe you was closer to God than you are right now. But if you just feel the urgency of the time and the hand of God upon your life, listen to some of this. Thank you, Father. God. Thank you, Lord. I keep buying voices.
that spirit of worship. I'm just going to read a couple of scriptures here. But there was a time there was a large, large, large multitude of people. And they were following Jesus. I, I, I love the way the writer sets this up. The apostles gathered themselves together unto Jesus and told him all things, both what they had done and what they had taught. And he said unto them, Come ye yourselves apart in a desert place and rest a while. Some of you right now is finding some, you finding some peace in the midst of your misery. That old dry place, that old desert where it's, you feel isolated and alone and you feel like you've got nothing to offer or nothing to give but it seems like you've been robbed and beat down and stoned but Jesus said just come and rest. Because you see he's going to be right there with you in that desert place. And uh, the Bible said they departed into that desert place by ship privately. But the people saw them departed and many knew him and ran afoot thither out of all cities and out went them and came together unto him. And Jesus, when he came out, saw much people. He was moved with compassion. Do you know the Lord himself was moved this morning with compassion? That's why he touched him. And this is why it was moved with compassion towards them because they were as sheep not having a shepherd and he began to teach them many things he broke some spiritual bread with them when the day was now far spent his disciples came to him and said this is a desert place and now the time is far past. Send them away. That they may go into the country round about and into the villages and buy themselves bread. For they have nothing to eat. And he answered and he said unto them, give you them to eat. And they just simply looked at him. And should we go buy 200 penny worth of bread and give to them? He said... Unto them, how many loaves have ye? Go and see. And when they had knew, they say five and two fish. And he commanded them to make all sit down by companies upon the green grass. And they sat down in ranks by hundreds and fifties. By fifties. And when he had taken the five loaves and the two fishes, he looked up to heaven and he blessed and he broke the loaves and gave them to his disciples to set down before them. And the two fishes divided he among them and they all did eat and were filled. There's going to be a bunch of fragments left over. Oh, yeah. You know what I you know what I see here in this little building down this curvy road, I see a lot of fragments. You know what a fragment is, don't you? It's not the whole loaf, but it's enough that it concerns the Lord. And the and the teaching that he taught was he wasted nothing. Absolutely. Because he counted the fragments as, as just as important of the load that was they broke yeah. off of. Yeah. You, you see, you got to understand this morning. Y'all get the same key. Oh. <laughs> Y'all got to listen to me now. You got to understand the load, five loaves and two fish. But when the breaking begins, sometimes things fall apart. Uh -huh. yeah. I say it's in his hands. And it wasn't slipping through his fingers, but it was still breaking apart. But it's in a good place to be to go through his hands because he lifts them up and he, he breaks it and he blesses it. Right. There's times in our life we feel broken. But you know how much he cares for us? They, they eat till they were all full. 
He said, you get back out there with them baskets and you get those fragments. Because they, because they just as needful as the whole loaf. The whole loaf. The church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Black, white, red, yellow. This denomination, that denomination, that non-denomination, that people, this people. That is the Lord. And we're the fragments. But the fragments in the hands of God is just as important as the full song of the Lord. And I love this. And they all eat. They were all full. The Lord set us a table down here this morning. And people just begin to eat. And you can be satisfied when you're eating off the Lord's table. Not satisfied, and that means I'm not talking about, you know, I'm going as far as I'm going to go. No, that ain't what I'm talking about. No, satisfied. Well, I had enough now. I'll get some more later. No, I'm talking about being satisfied that you walked and basked in His presence uh, and He's walked among us by the Holy Ghost here this morning. And He's met every need and He's touched every name and He's helped the helpless. But before you can be fed, there's one thing that must happen. He'll break it, he'll bless it, he'll distribute it, but it's us that's got to eat it. Yeah. Is there anybody else here this morning that's still a little bit unsure? Is there anybody else that feels like they're just not quite satisfied because they don't feel like they, they've got what they needed yet? Well, guess what? It's not a piccadilly. It all comes the same way by Jesus Christ. We're justified by His blood. Now, we can be impregnated, filled with His Spirit. And we can all leave His place being full. Because you see, friend, you got to understand that 5,000 men plus women and children, they all had one thing in common. They all was weary and hungry. So he didn't have to make do no magic. He didn't have to beg people to eat. Just like we've been eating off his table here for quite some time now. Just walk in so burdened. Do you feel like you're a little bit lighter now? Do you feel like that maybe now it's going to be all right? Do you, do, you, do, you, do you believe that the Lord loves you? Glory to God. My God, do you feel like that you can be satisfied that you don't need nothing else? If I just walk in His presence, that you don't need all the things of this world, all you need. My God, is to eat from the Master's table. Sparse in the wilderness, he said, amongst our enemies. He'll keep them enemies back. You know that enemy of fear and doubt and pain and problems and bondage and affliction and addiction. He'll keep them back and let you partake of his good table. You know, peace, joy. Come on. Happiness, power, Amen. hope, and our hope is in Him. Yes. Because when we eat off the Master's table, He's teaching us how faithful He is. In return, He wants us to be faithful to Him. That's the fulfillment of the whole gospel right there. Just giving everything to Him. The disciples, as close as they walk with the Lord, but in their mind, hey, it's past spent. It's too many to feed, send them home. But you've got to understand now, they, they're going to faint with exhaustion. Because in one place in the Gospels, they fought in three days with nothing to eat. They's a fast on the broken word of God. But how many knows the broken word of God is good for the, the spirit and the soul of man, but we still need a little nutrition. Yeah. So now the Lord is going to teach again, not only the bread 
from heaven the manna that fell in Moses' day. The Lord himself has been broken to be the bread of life. Come on, somebody. But, when, but you see, that's got to be first and foremost. And then he said, I'm going to take care of my house. What are we putting out? What are we putting in his house? What are, what are we plaguing his house with? It's his house. We're the body of Christ. He lives in us. But we're responsible to take care of this house. And in times when we feel broken and feel weary and feel tired and frustrated, feel like giving up, guess what? We come to a place just like this. It might look like a desert, feel like a desert. But can I tell you, there's nutrition in the desert because the Lord is here. And when they all eat, they were filled. That, that's, what, that's what it said. And they took up 12 baskets full of fragments. And watch this. It went for two fish to start and of the fishes. He's the multiplier. He's the divider. He's the adder and the subtractor. Everything is in him. And if you can learn the principle of being discipled by the Spirit of the Lord and is insufficient and inadequate and so small and minute and you don't feel like you can contribute nothing, he will teach you to begin to think better than that. you got to understand. We can't do nothing in ourselves without him, but we can do all things with him. Right, young people? Meaning this, y'all can be leaders, not followers. Come on, somebody. You don't have to run with it with the, with that kind of crowd. Just stay with Christ. Right. That's gonna it's gonna cost you one thing, guys. One thing, only one thing, and the one thing is all thing. Yeah. It's you. Right. It's everything. And when that enemy comes in, when this when when that enemy comes in as a flood, yeah. the spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard. That's right. yeah. If you'll just stay cloaked in His glory. Come on, and you'll just walk in His presence. How many feels like you're going to come to the table of the Lord? Huh? How many feel like you're going to leave this place better than when you got here? Glory to God. So, well, I don't, is that all the preaching? Well, we got another service at 2 o'clock. I get more preaching. There's no more I can say now. We've had three altar calls, four invitations, and the power of God met us in every one of them. Yeah. So, uh, it, 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 in fact, it's like this. If you didn't get full this morning, if you didn't get satisfied in His presence, then you're not eating off His table. Yeah. We like them sweets, Will. Huh? We don't want that, that nutritious stuff. We want to just, just give me the blessings, Lord. Yes. Come on, somebody. Just give me the blessings, Lord. I'm not faithful, but give me the blessings. Come on. I'm not committed, but give me the blessings, Lord. You know what's going to happen? Your spiritual teeth are going to rot out of your head. They're going to call you old snack or two. Come on. Come on, somebody. Do you know if you put the wrong stuff in your body, your physical body? Do you know if you put your wrong stuff in your spiritual body? Come on, somebody. If you live in fear or doubt or pain, if you if you live in unforgiveness or debate, huh? contention, Boy, ain't that just a beautiful yes. sight? Yes. When families yes. come together, ain't this just a beautiful yes. sight? Yes. Oh, the Lord's the Lord of families. Remember that. Remember that. The Lord's the Lord of families. He puts the broken pieces back together. Oh, my partner back. I tell you, that's my partner back there. Um, as I prayed for him, he let me squeeze the squishy ball. <laughs> Come on. 
I squeezed it in the name of Jesus. Yeah. 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 Huh? Listen, we're fixing to, we're fixing to close, but listen. You say, Lord, when that devil can almost convinced you that you, you, you can't live victorious in God, the Lord says. How many knows that the Lord gets the final word? Yes, yes. 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 Well, don't get offended with me, but shut up sometimes and listen. Yes. Can I say that? Yes. Sometimes we need to shut up and listen. Yes. I always want to talk. Sometimes you, if faith goes by hearing, Sometimes God's got your answer, but you're too yakky. You just yak, yak, yak all the time. You, you, you just run from here to there, in and out, up and down. You're always wringing your hands, wiping the brow, and you get all worked up about some things that God says that really wasn't your business anyway. Yeah. Right. So when Elijah got his mind off of the fire falling, the rocks renting, and the winds blowing, then the Lord spoke to him right. in a still small voice. Wow. God had to lead, let the cycle. See, God would have spoke to him under the juniper tree. You know, the juniper tree that he sat down and wished to die. Oh, God would have spoke to him then, but he was so he was still yakking in his mind about the misery and the pain and it ain't fair and he's the only one and all these things. God don't compete for a place in you. He has all of you or he has none of you. My God, I'm telling you, if we could just, just be still and be quiet sometimes, just let him minister to us. How many? 5,000 men plus women. And back in them days, they like to have a lot of children. Yeah. Yeah. I want to tell you, I guarantee you, there's there's fifteen to 20,000, maybe more people on that hill. And they bust out with a with a couple of some, the two fish and a few loaves of bread. How many was it the naysayers that day? His own disciples couldn't figure it out. You know what? Because they're yakking. They always wonder and always your mind is busy, busy, busy. That's why you got to take that all some time and lay your hand on your own head. Yeah. 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 Was it harder to feed that many people with just a handful of stuff? Was that harder than stopping a few possession and, and, and saying a prayer and the dead rise? Was that harder than a woman 38 years in a church house? He walks in there and she's so weighted down and bent over she can't even look up. It was it was that harder for him to just take it in anything that goes through his hands that you my God we, yes break us Lord break us from our own ways break us for God for our own thinking because not only with the breaking is the blessing you see sometimes you got to be broke to get blessed. But you're in his hands. We don't, we're not in his fist. He don't hold us against our will. We're in his hand. Yeah. But now we've been broken, we've been blessed, and now we're being distributed. Come on. And you might be the one to say something about the Lord that to somebody so hungry because they feel like they're starving to death, and they'll feed from that thought. Yeah. And then they'll take that one thought and they'll go back into their household of Israel and say, you know what? I heard something that excited me. I heard something that I believe that the Lord, the Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ can take a broken mess and bring revival. Look around one more time. Did you feel if you know what you see? You see a bunch of broken mess at one time.
was living a life of misery, torment, and pain and affliction. But by what the Lord done, He looked past our fault, He saw the need for mankind. He freely gave Himself at Calvary. Now we've been ransomed. I said we've been redeemed. We had no hope, but now we have hope. This is 
going to go down quite a bit. Unless you, get, if you, unless you get more faithful to God this year, you will feel so isolated and alone, and you will believe every lie from hell itself. Oh, they looked at me funny. They didn't talk to me. They didn't come up to somebody. This is the time. You get so connected. Bump your neighbor gently. No, don't even do that. Just look at it. It's time to get connected. You know, that wasn't gently. Get connected. Because if you don't get connected to the body of Christ, you're going to always feel like a visitor. You walk in here and all of a sudden somebody puts some eyes at you. And then you'll think the worst right off the bat. Come on. You know how that old devil does. Come on. But when you're part of the family, when nothing else matters more than God. Fail. He don't force feed. 
He don't hook you up. Listen, he'll hook you up on life support. Huh? That's him. That's his spirit. I'm supported by the life of God. Right? But he won't force nobody. Ain't that right, Kyle? Amen. He said, you're long, preacher. Make me squeeze that ball again. Glory to God. Amen. We're fixing to quit. Don't you, ain't you just excited about what God's doing? Yeah. I'll see some great things. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Sister Christy, Thank come up here. Jesus. You can bring that husband of yours if he wants to come to <laughs> But she's got an announcement. I want you to listen to this. Listen. Go ahead, Sister Christy. Tell us what we need before we leave. <laughs> all right. Well, um, as you all know, we're fixing to leave for Honduras.